The Universal logo gets in, gets out, and gets on with its life, obviously aware of what a turd it's distributing domestically. That's seriously the fastest the Universal logo has gone by in like 15 years or so. I'd be thankful if their shame weren't so obvious. Comcast. Reading. Movie should have given my 7th grade paper entitled The Great Wall of China, The Mystery, The Majesty, and The Legend a partial writing credit. Maybe it will also get a C- for my social studies teacher. We were the strongest. Remember why you're here. <laughs> what is that accent Matt Damon's doing? <laughs> I've been left for dead twice. Movie continues the story of The Revenant and thinks we can't tell the difference between Matt Damon and Leonardo DiCaprio. And while I admit it's super tough to distinguish the two of them, I'm one of the people on Earth who can. A bunch of whatever and shit. In the first six minutes, this movie's already deciding it's not going to show us anything and edit it sloppily. This is how fifth graders shoot movies when they don't have access to makeup and special effects. What's your excuse? What was that? I don't know. And nobody making the movie knows either. So these two guys survive as something and just keep riding like they didn't start out with a dozen men. And I'm mostly pissed at this point at how little this movie's characters seem to care about killed friends. A long way to go to die. Long way. This is a cool visual, I'll grant you. But why the f would you waste this many arrows on a show of strength move? Holy sh that's Prince Oberon from Game of Thrones, slumming his ass off here in this shitty Chinese attempt at a Hollywood blockbuster. Everyone in this movie is better than this. Decent visual, but why are there so many goddamn soldiers stacked and lined up in this castle's hallways? Like, build the hallways bigger if they're going to be commonly filled with this many bodies. Great Wall Commander is conveniently hot so that I'll keep watching this. Where was this found? You speak English. Super common for ancient Chinese female warrior leaders to speak English. Duh, Matt Damon. This movie is already knocking off Game of Thrones. The creatures they're about to face from the north are essentially the White Walkers, and the guy who played Oberyn Martell is right next to Matt Damon. And Matt Damon acted in the same movie as Sean Bean one time. And winter is coming. <laughs> Strategist Wang is the best accidental band name ever. Why are you here? We came to trade. Ah, sudden Willem Dafoe! Also, does the movie seriously need this many white people? This is an ex machina attack right here. They're just about to decide whether to kill these two English speakers. And suddenly they get attacked, throw dudes in the stockade, so they can later learn the English speakers know how to fight monsters, let them out to help in the battle, the end. Jesus Christ, this film was written by a 12-year-old. I don't want to sh** all over ancient China, but how many war drummers do they really need? And do said war drummers need to be elaborately dressed? <laughs> this idiot keymaster is the reason why Matt Damon will be fighting monsters instead of sitting in a prison cell. Destiny is when you have tens of thousands of trained Chinese fighters in a battle they've been preparing for their whole lives against monsters, but a simple mistake allows one white guy to turn the tide. You two prisoners we very nearly executed shall stand here, on the command deck, while a battle happens, because we subconsciously already realize we super need your help. Wait, are all the girl soldiers dressed in this bright blue armor? Are we segregating this army by color? What the f***? The black are the foot soldiers, and the red, those are the archers. Easily distinguishable by not only their red clothing, but all the archery stuff. In the blue, they're all women. What the hell do they do? Well, if I go back in history, they're the ones with the lightning kick and the spinning bird kick. And sometimes they taunt you by saying, want to see my kung fu? I'll show you. So rest easy. Also, they throw spears, apparently. Which is, for some reason, a sexually segregated war skill in the society. We just saw this same shit already! I get this movie wants to have its calm before the storm pre-battle moment, but what the f*** set off all the urgent battle alarms if you all got ready but still had to f***ing wait for the enemy for a while? Discount fiery marble madness! According to this movie, the Great Wall is 5,500 miles long, but this movie is still focusing on just this one section of the wall. Am I to believe the other 5,449 miles of this wall are under similar attack this entire movie? Or that they just didn't consolidate forces well enough on this one section to end this attack quickly? Movie focuses on one single slow motion projectile that will hit its target true cliche. Um, sure thing boss, those are easy to see and target from here. Also, the monsters have video game weak spots. <laughs> I knew this movie had mystical elements and monsters, but I didn't realize they would be hilariously stupid croc iguanasauruses with faux hawks. Also, yes, if you're not catching my drift, I'm totally mocking the creature design here, as it appears to be lazy as f Movie once so bad to be Helm's Deep, it forgot that it had half the talent and one-tenth the budget, but still went through with things. While watching these blue badasses of hotness bungee jump off the wall and killing some of the monsters is kinda cool, it seems super inefficient. But killing, what, a handful of these bastards at a time? Um, humans cannot operate regular ropes fast enough for them to serve as bungees. God damn, this movie is offensive even without Matt Damon's involvement. No, seriously, I've only watched 20 minutes of this turd, and I'm so f***ing mad about the regular ropes being pulled fast enough to serve as bungee cords thing, I'm ready to add 1,000 sins and give the f*** up on this movie. I can't do that because it's not ethical to our formula and format, but hot Jesus, I really want to more than ever before. This is a flaming bag of poo on the front porch of your life. Stamp it out and you only get flaming poo all over your shoes and pants. Oh, they got one! Took them long enough. They suck at being a threat if this is the first one of these dangling human being fishing lures they've managed to catch. Let's talk about the Great Wall plan for a moment. We're going to super overstaff the drumming department because we love sound. Then we're going to staff the top of the wall with tons of archers and these flaming meteor propellers and shit. All the projectile weapons you can think of. 
Then we're going to create these platforms and give these ladies some killer spears and use rope and human strength to create a bungee effect where they dive down into close quarters with the enemy and stab them manually. Do I have that right? There's only one group going down to attack in person and it's the all ladies battalion? This movie offers me so many paths for sitting I can barely choose. That's sad because all these rings represent how stupid those attacks are. Yo, over there. Why isn't he tied up? Guy not playing Prince Oberon would be excellent at cinema sins. There's our escape. Yes, that one human can definitely help you escape this million person battle. Of course he can. Camera swoop over subpar CGI that does nothing for nobody. Here's a sentence I'd never thought I'd say, but here we go. This movie totally rips off World War Z. Goddamn, these drummers get as much screen time as Matt Damon does. Good thing there was one guy randomly walking around the wall who could cut William loose. I'm going to venture that this is Willem Dafoe's only reason for being in this movie. After seeing this movie, yeah, I totally stand by that statement. Fight or run? Run where? So you're just begging to be freed so you can die in this battle? How about you run, oh, anywhere the opposite side of the wall? Aim for the eyes! How does William know that? The command to go for the eyes was yelled in Mandarin, and he hasn't been able to see any part of the battle, and the only experience he had fighting these things was when he cut off an arm. So the f is he an expert at monster fighting all of a sudden? Matt Damon, action star through editing, ladies and gentlemen. Also, if he was so good at catching a spear in midair and attacking a monster, he really should have aimed for the eye, since he's such an expert at killing these things and all. <laughs> the scraping sound you hear is actually the sound of Matt Damon's bank account trying to keep up with the massive influx of money from appearing in this film. Turns out it made a good sound effect for this scene as well, and everyone was pleased. These purple close combat assholes here in the background are f***ing useless. Literally not one of the moves. The movie will now make fake mythical allegremlins somehow subject to the same cape-waving bias as standard Earth bulls for some reason. <laughs> this is Monster Talk 4. This movie needs to be feature length, so let's go back, log a few more hours in the simulator, and attack again later. I think they'll hang us now. I could use the rest. Who's trying less here? The screenwriters or Damon? What's he looking at? I hope it's not some cliche mirror bullshit. Oh, f me. How so? These assholes didn't do anything special. The only real advantage they had was having large numbers. They're not raptors. They weren't systematically looking for weaknesses in the perimeter fence. Are you? Hi, I'm Willem Dafoe, and I introduce myself by sticking a torch near your face while you're sleeping, instead of simply saying, Hi, I'm Willem Dafoe. You may recognize me from such films as Nymphomaniac Volume 2, Spider-Man 2, Speed 2 Cruise Control, and Platoon. I came with mercenaries for the same thing 25 years ago. Hmm, okay. But the people of the Great Wall were about to imprison William and Tovar indefinitely until their heroics. So what exactly did this guy do to be able to walk around so freely? Don't tell him, okay, yeah. The powers that be at the Great Wall interrupt dinner so that William can show his inner Katniss Everdeen. Talk about some Hunger Games, am I right? <laughs> right? Okay, first of all, some fucking bullshit. Legolas saw this and said, Fuck off, mate. Second of all, he shot all those arrows within 1.5 seconds of each other, but then the last two took way longer to arrive on scene than the first one that tipped the bowl. Third of all, I hate this movie, I hate this sin writing assignment, and I hate Matt Damon! Oberon Martell is either doing exactly what I'm doing right now, or he's mocking me! Wait, he was just standing up right next to Damon, but in the three seconds since, he walked over to a bench, sat down, and then got bored enough to yawn? You know what I think? I think you're afraid. Movie stops dead in its tracks so that William and Lynn can bungee flirt. A taste, a glimpse, a few pilfered grains from Strategist Wong's supply of black powder. Every time they say Strategist Wang, I picture a hand of the king on Game of Thrones tossing his dick on a giant table-sized war map. In the armory doors, you have keys. I have black powder. Enough for several doors. Why didn't Ballard escape during the first monster attack? Was he so curious about William and Tovar he couldn't carry out the plan? I know the monsters attacked early, but it seems like this dude's been thinking about this for a long time. Like, 25 years. So why didn't he take the opportunity then? There was an emperor whose greed brought deep suffering to all of China. Luckily, to prove this guy's point, historical scrolls adorn this entire war room so that he can give William visual aids. The heavens sent a meteor that struck Gowu Mountain. They could also just start calling this guy Expositionist Wang. From that day on, the Tao Te rise every 60 years. They're like really patient locusts. They come to remind us of what happens when greed is unchecked. Also, she depends on her soldiers to feed her. Later, Wang tells them that everyone who goes to hunt these things never returns. So how has anyone been able to observe these monsters to know this much about them? It's common knowledge that soldiers on horseback, at least in the melee weapon age, are better at fighting than soldiers on foot. So why, after noting something was off, does this general dude command everyone to dismount? And yes, they do this shield formation thing. But just look at that shit. Not one of these people behind the shields can see jack or shit, including the general. This is the stupidest fucking investigate something weird formation in the history of earthly militaries. This might have worked if they didn't scream to announce their presence. And after the general was bitten, stuff happened. 
Maybe the creatures got away, maybe they were killed by the remaining soldiers. We'll never know, and that's kind of sad, since this movie cares more about trying to make me sad that this asshat is dying than it does the action it promised from the outset. God damn it. So, the first attack they showed almost no intelligence. And then on this second surprise attack, they get points for being somewhat intelligent, but they screw it up. These monsters need to show a hell of a lot more intelligence before anyone admits to underestimating it. This death scene would be way more powerful if this guy had been given any real character. Also, holy sh**, this movie made 170 million in China. Like, China ate this shit up. I wonder, do only the soldiers nearby get to mourn the general? Or did everyone abandon the entire 5,000 mile wall to come to this funeral? Yes, I'm still harping on this, because the movie's biggest problem, which is saying something, is how it wants to make all the action take place on one small section of a wall that is undeniably far too long for this movie to make sense. Seriously, this movie wastes a ton of time. This is all for a character we saw in a couple scenes and never got to know. The movie has given us one battle we already saw done better in the Two Towers in World War Z, and the rest has been bungee jumping and funerals. If the Tao Te are so intelligent, why don't they attack now? While well, everyone is in super not battle ready morning gear and posture. By the way, this is a colossal cheat in movies. When you do these floating death lanterns, it looks absolutely gorgeous. How can you hate something that looks so pretty? They're here to say, forget your issues with this movie. These lanterns will call on you. I believe that magnet was the reason that two of you Westerners killed the Tao Te so easily. Movie really hasn't shown what's so special about the Tao Te that they couldn't be killed so easily. They have a f***ing video game weak spot. They aren't ninjas. There's just a lot of them. That's their only skill. I believe the magnet makes the Tautier deaf. Without instruction, they fall still. So they're the aliens from Independence Day, then? Excellent. Also, if these people knew magnets cause such a thing, and have known this for 900 years, why hasn't most of their time been spent trying to find or create magnets? They have 60 years between attacks to look for f***ing magnets. By my math, that's 15 generations of monster attacks that went magnetless. Magnets, man, how do they work? Also, what happened to the great magnet that helped kill those beasts 900 years ago? Sh man, the f How can we be sure? Why not try it? Yeah, that's a great idea. We should try something to see if it works. Why didn't anyone think of this trying before? If you've got some sort of potion that might possibly put these monsters to sleep, why isn't this in mass production? Why haven't you been throwing cauldrons of this shit at the creatures? I mean, Jesus. They're making all these hunt and capture a Tao Te preparations like shit is imminent. But looking at this fog over the wall, it's literally impossible they saw one coming. But convenient, since they need to catch one of these creatures using their new magnet attack. The idea that these listening horns would do any measurable bit of good. <laughs> you. There's no way the creature was that silent running up the wall, then started screaming like a useless dick. Man, even Matt Damon's moral conscience is phoning it in here. Ah, harpoons! I love how in this second major battle they unveil all these weapons they never even tried using in the first battle. Like the harpoons, and the dudes on ropes running down the wall to fight hand-to-hand, -hand, and the scissor-cutting in-wall blades. Wonder what they're gonna save for the third battle. Okay, he's doing his I've decided to do the right thing hero walk. Fine. What the f*** are all these opposite direction marching assholes doing? Where are they going? Damon says they need to isolate the creature from the others. She yells, Ring of Fire, and immediately a bunch of catapults launch fiery things, and then somehow surround the targeted Tao Te, even though no one ever told the Ring of Fire people where to f***ing aim. They line that shit up before the battle, and it ended up being perfect. These assholes shoot arrows into the fog and somehow completely miss William, which is insanely lucky. <laughs> He did not have time to do that! Also, Tovar shows up out of motherfucking nowhere to save William. But how did he know where to go? It's foggy as sh**, and I don't think he climbed down the chain to get here. So the f***ing f*** is this f***ing sh**. It's not every day the movie itself goes so far out of its way to point out the scene where it crosses the line. What the hell are you doing? She's listening. So, he's right that she's listening. Cool story, bro. But her immediately calling for black powder weapons instead of a rescue squad? What message did she think he was sending when he fired those whistling arrows back up at her? And yep, they are blind firing super deadly explosive firework weapons through a fog into an area where they know the dudes they're trying to protect are standing. That's actually what's happening right now. And sure, you could argue she doesn't care about the two white men below. And maybe she doesn't. But she's still ultimately facing a legion of Tao Te, and ostensibly trying to capture one of them here. So how is firing bomb arrows down here supposed to help her side in any way? She might kill the white guys that know more than they do, and she might kill the specimen they're trying to capture, so what gives? I know very little of the outside world. You know, besides mostly perfect English. Forget what you have seen. This is my mantra for most movies I watch. Come on! This thing was supposedly drugged by a tipped arrow, and the best you could do while it was under was put him in a small cage he can easily roll over and not bind his arms and legs. You didn't chain it up or hit it with even more drugged arrows? I'm embarrassed for you at how inept you are at doing things. 
seems like this could maybe have been done in the field of battle, and they wouldn't have had to go through all the trouble of capturing one of these assholes. But experiment to prove what is already proved is experiment. You're much braver than they think. Lies protagonists tell to characters in movies to seem more protagonist -y. Also, is the real reason they underestimate this guy really bravery? Or is it because he's stupid and clumsy? The time they spend killing him, this time they are not chasing us. That is sage. I'm wondering, does it take very long to kill somebody? Also, does it take the entire army to kill somebody? Seems like they have enough people to do both things. Can't they multitask? So there's the third time these assholes have mentioned how they've underestimated the intelligence of these creatures. The question is, once they realize they've underestimated the intelligence, just how much intelligence do they give them credit for? How do they quantify? You can't keep lowballing them on intelligence and be surprised when they jump the bar. See if it's gone out. Is it safe? Of course it is. Please don't comically exp- God damn it! This is the first time Ballard's ever been in this room, and yet he knew he could cut a rope and have something heavy fall on William, who just happens to be in the right spot. I don't even know why they bothered to tie whatever this is in the manner that they did, but it seems to exist only because the script says it does. So, were they afraid that if they didn't attack the wall, somebody would have wandered down here and found the tunnel? Or is the process of tunnel digging so loud they needed the cover of war to dig it? Except magnets. There's no better successful test, though, than when you really need them to work for the plot. Hey, let's take this thing we barely even captured and that flip this metal cage all over the place on top of the wall all the way into our kingdom to meet our teen ruler. Raise your hand if you love that idea as much as I do. I tried to stop. You dare to speak to me. So, do they really think that William tried to steal black powder and then like a doofus got beat over the head by a hanging bag of doodads in the process? Manufactured conflict is manufactured. No! No! Shocker! Willem Dafoe's character was in it for himself all along. Still don't know what he needed with William or Tovar, but man, what a dick. I am appalled. Oh well, look! There are a bunch of these Hindenburg contraptions taking flight at once, and yet somehow this movie is going to end with the humans victorious. Is there a chance? There's only one. Kill the queen. Starship troopers in the house, y'all. Tell the world what you have seen, and tell them what is coming. They will definitely believe your story and immediately start mass production of magnets. <laughs> Damon X Machina. Also, is he riding an eagle here? Or do I just still have LOTR PTSD to deal with? I set you free. And here I am. Let's do it. They will not attack while the queen is feeding. We have a chance. That is entirely new information, though. In Australia, these Tao Te minions circle the queen in the opposite direction. This guy is still around, trotting on a horse super slowly and carrying this dynamite thing. And it says a lot about this movie that I have no recollection of how he got here, even though that was like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> the born Captain America. Yes, Suicide Arrow guy saves the day, but probably also kills all of his friends, if you care about physics. But this movie clearly does not care about physics, so, hmm. I guess Addison, because I'm so f***ing exhausted and nothing is more to blame than this movie. And it will go to the Queen when it's done. It should. It will. Here's where I start railing against these f***ing movies where the threat is hive-minded. It's so f***ing boring. Kill the queen or the mothership or the head vampire. It's too f***ing easy. Make a threat with some diversity, dickheads. This guard is going to let the underling into the hive, even though he's got a bunch of bombs strapped to his back. And while they may not know what bombs are, I've been told I've vastly underestimated their intelligence at every turn, so f*** it. General! It's up to you now! This magnet can be thrown from all the way down here, and still attract to the little bit of metal all the way up here, then surely it has more power than the nine feet we were told earlier. For the second time in a row, movie will pad the runtime with a you think he got it, but the enemy will foil it at the last second scene. I've trained for this my whole life. Dumbass, stupid, idiotic, fucking bungee attack is going to win the day. Not since Shia in Crystal Skull has a movie character swinging on a vine offended me so personally. William and Lynn survived this. I could take the black powder, or I could take you. If I were in William's shoes, I would have proposed a third option. Have General Lynn's baby. What is Edward Zwick's deal with white guys coming in to save Asian cultures? First the last samurai, then love and other drugs, and now this. I would build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. This way. Winter is coming. Legend tells of a legendary warrior whose kung fu skills were the stuff of legend. Oh, my humanity! I will be your champion. No! Bastard! If 
I'm to join you, I'll need my bow. And my axe. Heal tribes. Tis no man. Tis a remorseless, eaten machine. It was hard to know who was more crazy. Matt Damon. Elvis! Magnets! Magnets!